Hello, and welcome to the Princeton Music Composition Department virtual tour. My name is Pascal LaBeouf. And I'm Molly Heron, and you're listening to the music of grad student Florent Gis. Pascal and I are current grad students, and we are going to walk you through some of the spaces commonly used by grad composers at Princeton. We're going to be looking at a few different buildings throughout the Princeton campus over the course of the tour. To begin, we're going to look at the Woolworth Building. This is the lobby of the Woolworth Building. You can see there through the glass that that's the lower level of the music library, which takes up three floors on one side of the building. Now we're going to look down into McAlpin, which is where we do a lot of rehearsals. And there's a big window in the lobby of the Woolworth Center where you can look and see what's going on. The choir rehearses here and, and uh, the steel pan ensemble. And there's some occasionally classes that are held in there. It's sort of a recital space. Now you're looking at one of the graduate student office spaces. These are places where we kind of go to hang out yeah, and relax and work. Yeah, I really love this work. room. I've gotten so much work done in this room. It's also nice to just come and sit on the couch and talk to your colleagues and be around people that are being productive. Yeah, there's, there's a computer and speakers and keyboard in there. Um, and you can also, of course, bring in your own stuff. We don't claim spaces. Spaces are sort of first come, first serve but it's never a problem. It always sort of works out. Oh, the light looks so nice in there. There's also a mini fridge in there, so you can bring food and, and, and drink uh, some things. And an electric tea kettle, thanks to me. Oh, yeah. my favorite part of the virtual tour, the recording studios. Here we have Studio B. In Studio B you'll find a number of well-organized cables, some modular synth gear, and a disc clavier piano. You can send MIDI to it and watch your wildest dreams come true. The room is also set up uh, to, to do some kind of dry recording if you're interested in that sort of thing. And it's sometimes used as a classroom. There's some undergrad classes, electronic music classes that happen in here. And connected to Studio B is, you guessed it, Studio A. Um, Studio A is a lot better for mixing and uh, the sound is even uh, even better for a low signal to noise ratio. Um, there are a number of keyboards in there including like a cool little one that famously belonged to Paul Lansky. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, a, and a, a drum kit obviously and some some other random things. Both of these studios you can just sign out and there is, there's a limit to how many hours a week you can sign out the studios. And of course you have to work around if there's any classroom stuff happening in there, but it's basically not a problem. There's, they're, they're available a lot of the time and, and there's a lot of projects that grad students do in these two rooms. You can sign them out just to mix stuff. You can bring people in to record and there's no, there's no limit on that. It's just about, um, like I said, there's like you have to watch out for how much, how many hours you use a week, and just be courteous to other people using the space. They also have great microphones and hardware. And here you can see what we affectionately refer to as Studio C. Uh, this is a place where you can solder things and take things apart, and uh, it's. It's generally used for storage, though. 
So you're probably not going to spend too much time in here unless you need to get a cable or something like that. This is another one of my favorite rooms. It's just, there's really just room in here for one person to work at a time, so you can have some privacy. As you can see, there's a nice speaker set up, monitor, there's a Nord in there. And I think actually at this point, they've got um, eight speakers set up for surround sound. There was some project that was happening in there and yeah so I think I think those are all different channels and you can do some serious mixing in that room. And here we have the entrance to Taplin Auditorium which is where in, in pre-COVID times uh, concerts would happen. Yeah our, our Princeton Sound Kitchen concerts all happen in Taplin Auditorium which is in actually a math building but we claim this little space and it sounds really great. It's yeah, a really it's a, flexible room if you want a dry sound or reverb. We've heard so many different kinds of music happen in this room, and it, it is. It's very it's a very flexible space for a lot of different things. And it looks like they've got a harpsichord on the stage in there right now. But there's any number of instruments that might appear. And then you can... Oh, no, it's not a harpsichord. Is that a piano? So it's a harpsichord. Look how many feet it has. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. It's an octachord. Oh. And there's the... It's <laughs> and there's a huge-ass <laughs> piano. It's his piano. You can do an awful lot in this room with lighting and, and things like that, too, which the Princeton um, uh, staff are really good yeah, at Yeah, the with. staff, the production staff is amazing, and they, they make everything sound great and look great in there. There's really quite an amazing lighting setup. And now here we are at the brand new arts complex that was just finished in what, 2018, 2019? So yeah. brand new. And first we're going to look at the Efron building. This, this Lewis Arts Complex is kind of split into two towers. Um, and so the first one is where a lot of the practice rooms are and where the jazz bands rehearse in their combos. And uh, right now you're looking at the hallway between practice rooms. Yeah, one of the top floors of the Efron building with practice rooms on either side. They're kind of set up as like these little cubes with space in between, which is supposed to kind of help them uh, isolate sound. And they just look really pretty. Yeah, it's a lovely building. Um, every room has windows. You know, it's there's a lot of light in there. There you can see the evidence of windows. <laughs> <laughs> the pianos are excellent too. They When they built the, the building, they made all new pianos. There's a room that Molly and I use all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice one. It's and actually uh, a teaching studio. We're just using it because of COVID now. But all the pianos are kept in really good condition. So if you're a pianist, this is a great situation. <laughs> It's a huge wide open lobby and there's actually a, a pool on top of it. You can see through those windows, which is pretty incredible. You can look up and see water up in the skylights. And the pool's up there on the top. Not like a swimming pool, but you know, a, a fountain. an aesthetic water element. <laughs> And these are the stairs you go down into this lobby, and you can see there the outside of the Lee rehearsal room, which mm -hmm. is a really lovely room that orchestras rehearse in, and 
The we big have, band, too. And the big band. We have PSKs in there sometimes. We've yeah. had a couple of PS- And I recorded an album in there. It was so lovely. Yeah, it's a really beautiful space. And we're still here watching the outside of it. Oh, you can see the elevators. Aha, here we go. Here's the little uh, foyer. So as we're getting inside here, you'll notice the walls are all this beautiful wood paneling. And you can see this big window that kind of looks outside. There's also a curtain so that you can uh, close the light so that uh, it's a completely dark space, which can be helpful if you're interested in doing video projects in there. Yeah, and can't you also change... Isn't there a curtain that... Oh, you can just pull a big curtain along the side of the wall to really block your the sound off from the lobby. Mm-hmm. And look how pretty it is. It's such a beautiful room. And it smells nice in there, too. There's all the, you know, orchestra seats and all the stuff. They, we did a concert in there where we tuned one of those pianos down a quarter tone and had had a whole PSK of, of music that was written for microtonal pianos. showing you the Plork Studio. Plork stands for Princeton Laptop Orchestra. So this is the uh, Lewis Center's kind of electronic music studio. And you can see in here a whole bunch of well-organized equipment. Uh, there are a bunch of laptops and control surfaces and other controllers on that shelf and lots of well-organized cables, a drum set. There's also a disc clavier piano in this room, which you'll see in a second. And this is where the where Plork, Plork rehearses. Meets, yeah. and, and there's also a couple other classes that help happen in there. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I hope it hasn't been too rambly. Um, we're, we're sorry that you can't come visit in person. Usually we, we do all this with people in the space. And it's but it's good. certainly been fun making these videos for you and getting to see these spaces again. And yeah, uh, which we haven't we, seen for a long time. We can't wait to meet you uh, all, so yeah. please come hang out with us.